you doing anything right now? Are you opening or anything? No, we're not doing you anything. opening. I'm open. We're live now. We're live now. What you got in that, bud? What's that dog's name? It's 11 o'clock. What's his name? Out of control, my friend. I don't want to hear go ahead and start it. That way, if anybody joins, so these people already joined us. Well, you know, it's all right. It, it's, a, it's a changing time problem. Mm -hmm. All right, it's time to start. Rachel just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, are y'all ready? Miss Evans? Hey y'all, let's stand. Let's open this place. This, this service up. We're gonna have the words on the screen momentarily. Here we go. To God be the glory. Great things He has done. So loved He the world that He gave us His Son. Who yielded His life as a service today. We are glad that you are with us this morning. Go ahead and take your Bibles as we do our Sunday morning reading together in the scriptures to Psalm 18. Psalm 18, we're going to pick up at verse 20. We read verses 1 through 19 last week. Today we're going to read verses 20 through 30 in Psalm number 18. While you're turning there, I just want to give you some announcements this morning. Uh, we want to welcome Jeremy and Rachel again with us this year. You know, last year when they came was on March the 15th. This is the 14th today, and that was the Sunday, the last Sunday we had service. We had to shut down after that. Um, so I'm glad we're back to be meeting together and everything's getting back together. I'm, I'm thankful for that. So we're glad to have Jeremy and Rachel and their children with us. Every time they come, y'all got one more. Uh -huh. <laughs> but we're glad.
glad they're here with us uh, today. We look forward to hearing them lead us in worship the Lord and, and Jeremy preaching. So you pray for them. They're going to come up right after we pray this morning. They're going to have the rest of the service today. So you pray uh, for them uh, this morning. All right. Uh, the children's ministry will meet today at 4 o'clock, 4 to 5. Uh, children's ministry. So bring your kids up for that this evening, 4 to 5. Choir practice at 5.45, and Sunday night service tonight starts at 6.30. I want you to come, be with us tonight, as we're uh, going through the book of Romans together. We're in Romans chapter 4, so I encourage you to come be with us uh, tonight at 6.30. This Wednesday night, there will be no youth meeting at 6.30 this week. No youth meeting this week, but we will have Bible study here in the church at 7 o'clock. So I invite you to come be with me on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock uh, in our Bible study. Um, Two weeks from today is the 28th of March, which is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, two weeks from today. Uh, we're going to do our egg hunt that afternoon at 4 o'clock for the kids, okay? And usually we do that on Saturday, but this year we're doing it on Sunday at 4 o'clock on Palm Sunday, March the 28th. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board for uh, donations of colored eggs or plastic uh, eggs with candy in them. So if you want to help us out, I greatly appreciate it. Please go back there and sign up that you'll bring some eggs uh, and come that day and help us as we uh, have just fun time with the kids. I'm going to share the Easter story with them as I always do, using the carton of eggs to tell the story of Jesus. Uh, I'm going to do that with the kids before they actually hunt the eggs. So we invite you to come be with us uh, in that on the 28th. Also, don't forget we're doing on that Sunday morning the love offering for Fellowship of Christian Athletes in our service uh, that morning. Uh, speaking of that, uh, we have the basket on the table uh, for Jeremy and Rachel's ministry. So I encourage you to give to that ministry, and they, they do this full time. Uh, they travel all over the place to sing and preach, and so I encourage you to, to be a blessing to them in the ministry as God uses them, and put that in the basket this morning. They also have some CDs out front, so I'm sure you, uh, they would want you to look at those uh, before you leave today. Okay? Uh, Easter Sunday is the first Sunday in April this year on the 4th, April the 4th. We will have sunrise service at 7 o'clock, and we want to have breakfast together this year. Amen? Uh, so I'm going to do breakfast. So uh, there will be sign-up sheets next week on the bulletin board for what we need you to bring for breakfast. We already have someone going to do the eggs for us. Uh, so we want to have breakfast after sunrise service on Easter Sunday morning. And what we'll do after, the sunrise, after breakfast, we'll have Sunday school at 10 and worship at 11. Uh, that day on Easter Sunday, okay? There'll be no children's ministry or evening services that night. All right. Let's look to the Word of the Lord before we pray this morning. Let's get our hearts and minds ready for worship and ready to receive from the Word of God. Psalm number 18, verse 20. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, I, and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With a blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. With the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people, but you will bring down haughty looks. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Boy, I tell you, God just makes you want to run through a wall. You hear that? Amen? And we can leap over things and run through walls for the Lord Jesus Christ for his name's sake. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're grateful today for this opportunity to come together in this place to worship you and to seek your face in prayer, to hear from the word of God. We're thankful, God, that you love us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the holy scriptures and thank you for this time of reading publicly the word of God. Help us, O oh Lord, to take your word and hide it in our hearts that we will not sin against you. Help us to walk your word out in our lives and apply it. Not just be hearers, but be doers as well. I pray that you would bless this time, Lord, with your presence and an outpouring of your spirit upon us as we worship you and praise you and hear from the scriptures today. 
I thank you for everyone who's here today and those who are joining us by Facebook. Thank you for them joining us today, Lord. And I pray, God, that you bless this time. Bless Jeremy and Rachel as they come to, to sing and to worship you and praise you, Lord, this morning. I pray for your anointing upon them, that you pour out your spirit on them and use them to lead us in worshiping you, the one true and living God. Lord, I pray you bless him as he preaches this morning. God, empty him of himself, fill him with you, and speak through him into our hearts and lives. God, have your way in every life this morning, in every heart. You know our lives, Lord. You know what we're going through. You know everything about us. We pray that your will would be done in our lives today. If there's one here or one watching that's lost, that's in sin, we pray, God, today that you would awaken them, God, to their lost condition. I pray that have godly sorrow over their sins that would lead them to repentance and faith in you today, Lord. We pray, God, you bless all those on our prayer list. Touch those who are sick and hurting, we pray. And those who are grieving, may you bless them with comfort and peace. We pray for this nation, God, that as a church, we would be the light that we're supposed to be in this world. That we would be a difference from this world, O oh Lord. That people in this world could see you in us. We pray, God, that you would use us, Lord, to see and start a, a spiritual awakening in our community, in our land. We thank you for that. We love you this morning. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, let's welcome Jeremy and Rachel this morning. Amen. Thank you,
Well, in a world that's lost its mind, all we can do as the children of God is hold on. Knowing that God says, I'm a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's a very present help in a time of trouble, and we can hold on to that promise. Amen. What a joy it is for Rachel and I to get to be back with you at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Thankful, first and foremost, for the opportunity to uplift the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, we do feel like it's all right for God's people to come together just like we have this morning and have a good time worshiping Him. That's right. Yeah. At least the preacher feels the same way we do, Rachel. Yeah. Now, the Bible says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. We as children of God, if for nothing more than knowing that we've got a place being prepared for us, if we've been saved and born again, we can rejoice in yeah. knowing yeah. that this world is not our home. Yeah. And we're just passing through. And uh, in a world that is changing rapidly, Every single day of our lives. Little did we know a year ago when we were here what we were in store for. And yet here we are. Another year has gone by and things have changed in our lives. We've lost loved ones. We've lost friends. We've lost co-workers. We've seen things change that we never thought we would see change right before our very eyes. But what encourages me is to know that I've got a God who's not taken by surprise. In the world that we live in today, God is still on the throne. Jesus is still saving sinners. Some things will never change. Seems like this world's not all eternity. Let's go. 
the old songs, taking straight out of the hymn book. See if you remember this old one. What a happy time, son, last tomorrow. ourselves to you. Most of you know us. If you don't by now, this is my wife, Rachel. Rachel has spent uh, all of her life in full-time ministry, traveled with her family that you're so familiar with, the David Warren family. We've got three boys. We've got Bryson, Brecken, and Brooks. Bryson just turned seven years old. Brecken is four years old. Brooks just turned three years old. And Brother Brown, I've been running all across the country saying that we've got Bryson, Brecken, Brooks, and Dunn. <laughs> but... I can no longer say that because on August the 29th, I will have to change that, Brother Brown. It's going to be four and no more. All right? So if you don't know what that means, you see Rachel after the service and she'll explain it to you. All right? Bryson, come on up here, buddy. And we're going to let you sing real quick before time gets away from us. And uh, the Bible says train up a child in the way she's going. When he's old, he won't depart from it. Bryson came to us not long ago singing a song. Uh, that we had heard uh, in church. We, we're in church every week of our lives, sometimes three, four, five times a week. And uh, it's amazing. Just when you think kids aren't paying attention, they're picking up on every single word that's being said. And uh, Bryson started singing this song one day just out on his own. We were riding down the road, and I heard him singing this song, and it blessed my heart. And uh, I hope it'll do the same to you when you hear a little seven-year-old boy stand up here and sing for you this morning. I just can't help but praise the Lord Amen. for all that he has done.
mean much to y'all, but it means the world to me. And I've got a little seven-year-old boy that already has a desire to sing, and it's the prayer of mama and daddy that one day, uh, when it's his time, that it will go from being just a song or maybe just something in his head to something that is in his heart. We're praying uh, that the Lord does something in his heart and, pray and saves him. And uh, as we pray that for all of our children, and uh, well, it is uh, always a joy to get to do what we do. This is, as preacher told you, full-time ministry for us. And uh, we uh, travel wherever the Lord will open the door for us to preach and to sing the gospel, just like we're doing here today. And we can't thank you enough for allowing us to stop in and be with you today. And a uh, very rare occasion, we just live right over the, uh, right down the road here in Fort Valley. And uh, I cannot remember the last time I slept in my bed on a Saturday night. So uh, that, was a, that was a blessing to be able to do that and to be close to home today. And I uh, hope that we say or sing something that will be a blessing to you. Rachel and I recorded a song four years ago, and we, when we recorded it, we had no idea how God would use it uh, in the way that he has. And I hope that uh, if you don't hear any message in song that we share with you today, I want you to listen as Rachel sings a beautiful song entitled, Bring It All to Jesus.
beautiful song. Turn with me the book of Philippians, chapter number four. <coughs> and no, that's not COVID. <laughs> that is everything in Crawford County is blooming. <laughs> and uh, I told the preacher yesterday I went and got a steroid shot and a Z-pack. And uh, still not 100%, but uh, hopefully we'll have a lot better shape this, this Sunday than I was last Sunday. I didn't even have a voice last Sunday, so I'm thankful for that. But I'm uh, thankful, as I've already said this morning, always, and never take it for granted that uh, we would be trusted with the pulpit. And uh, I, I know preachers and pastors guard their pulpits, and rightly so. And uh, so, Brother Brown, I appreciate the honor and the opportunity to preach this morning. And uh, I'll try to give you what the Lord's laid on my heart. But before I do, let me very briefly mention the table in the back. When you came in, you probably noticed our table set up in the back back there. We have a brand new CD with us since we were here last year. And uh, super excited about it. A lot of songs that we sung for you this morning. Uh, sing me a song about heaven. Hold on. Uh, some things never change. What a great song that is. Uh, a lot of that is on a brand new CD in the back in time. Hold on. Pick that up on your way out the door. And uh, we want you to pay for it, of course. That would be a blessing. And uh, then we did something neat while we were in quarantine. We left here literally last year. This was our last date last year. We did not sing again until July. And uh, sat at home and just about went crazy. Uh, and to keep from doing that, we went to the, we got a little home studio there where we live and didn't do anything fancy or, or, or out, of the, uh, out of the box, so to speak. But we went back and uh, recorded some old songs that we were raised on singing around the church songs like, uh, I know who holds tomorrow and uh, I'll meet you in the morning and I know he heard my prayer and old songs like that, living by faith, a lot of great songs in the beautiful city we sang for you earlier. That's on a CD back there entitled Down Home Gospel. Now y'all should know us by now. We did not come here to beg your money, but it does cost us money to do what we do. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How shall they hear that a preacher? How shall he preach lest he be sent? And we're called of God but we're set by the local New Testament church, not because we decided to do it that way, but because Christ designed it that way. Amen. If you'd like to be a part of sending us further down the road with the message of the gospel, we actually have four CDs back there. Two of them we have since we were here last. Uh, but here's what we're doing this morning. Our CDs are normally uh, one for 15, two for 25, three for 30, or you can get all four of our CDs for just $40, okay? Take cash, check, Visa, MasterCard, all of that good stuff. And uh, if you stream, I see some of you younger people in here. If you stream, we're on Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, all that good stuff. Check us out. And uh, that's enough about that. Philippians chapter number four is where I want to find a parking place for the next few moments. Uh, specifically, the first seven verses, a very familiar passage of scripture. If you found your place with me, we'll dive right into the word of God. Verse number one, the Bible says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eudeus and beseech Syntech that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Would you pray with me, Heavenly Father? God, we thank you for this day and for all your many blessings. We thank you for the opportunity to once again stand and preach your word. But God, as the old hymn writer said, all is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. God, you know me like I know me. I'm filthy, I'm dirty, I'm rotten flesh. Outside of the blood of Jesus Christ that has been applied to my life, I cannot boast or brag of anything except for what you've done for me. And God, in the next few moments, I pray you give me clarity of speech. Help me to say exactly what needs to be said. Give me clarity of thought. Give me wisdom beyond my years to know what needs to be said and what doesn't need to be said. God, I've done my best to study, and I've done my best to prepare. Now help me. Uh, clothe me in my calling. Help me to preach this morning. We'll thank you and praise you for all that you do for us, in us, and through us. For we ask these things in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. This morning I want to get to verse number 7. 
But most of you can quote that verse from memory. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding. I want to get to verse number 7. But in order for us to get to verse number 7, we've got to get through these other six verses that I've read to you. It'd kind of be like this. Let's say that I am going to eat a steak right now. Well, that would be, seem kind of silly for me to say, wouldn't it? There's no steak here. There's no meat. There's no grill. There's no... Let me say this. The other day, my wife went against the will of God and cooked a steak for me in an air fryer. <laughs> Let me say that is totally and completely against God and against nature. <laughs> Brother Brown and some of you men can help me. If we're going, if we're going to grill a steak, we're going to do it right. We're going to get the charcoal out. We're going to dump it in that grill, and we're going to get it nice and red hot. We're not going to put the steaks on that grill until that, that charcoal has turned solid white. And then if you're like me and you want a good steak, you're going to take it one time. You're going to lay it on top of that grill for about five minutes, flip it over another five minutes, take it off the plate, and eat it. Somebody <laughs> say amen. amen. <laughs> Those are the preparations that have to be made in order for me to eat a steak. And what I'm afraid as Christians, as children of God, is we want what God has to offer us and we worship Him for what He does for us instead of worshiping Him for who He is. Yes, right. Right. Amen. If we're not careful, we'll say, thank you God for this and God give us this and God give us that and God thank you for my car and thank you. And we should be thankful, we should be gracious and we should be merciful. But we should also come to God with realization that God does not owe us one single thing. Amen. Every single one of us should be in a place called hell today. That's right. Some of us would do real good for like Bryson to, stand, to, to just stand up and say, God, I don't need anything. I just want to thank you and I want to worship you and I want to praise you just for who you are. Amen. And we live in a world today that is grasping at straws. There uh, and I had no idea, and I don't think any of us knew, when we met here this time last year, all what we would face in the past 365 days. The world has absolutely lost its ever-loving mind. Amen. Amen. And I'm not here to paint a doom and gloom picture this morning. But if we're going to experience peace, I believe that's one thing that America needs in the day and hour in which we live today. It's not another Republican. It's not another Democrat. The hope for America is that we turn back to the God of this Bible. Amen. America needs peace. Christians need peace. And this morning, if God be my helper, I want to show us in the first six verses, before we get to verse number seven, we'll call it this, the six prerequisites, the six things that have to happen in your life to experience peace that passeth all understanding. We'll take it verse by verse. Look with me. Verse number one, therefore, my brethren... Dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. This morning, if you're taking notes with me, if we're going to experience peace that passeth all understanding, first and foremost, we must stand fast in the Lord. Amen. Now, this morning when we left here a year ago, we had no idea the year that we would face, and we had no idea the troubles and the trials and the heartaches that we would face throughout the past 365 days since we met here last year with you all. I myself went through struggles and went through burdens and went through trials that I never dreamed I would find myself in. But can I say this morning, if we're going to experience peace that passeth all understanding, we must not place our hope in the things of this world. Right. We must not place our hope in the pill bottles or the alcohol bottles or the things of this world to try to fill a void in, there in our lives that can be so very easily filled by the person, Jesus Christ. Stand fast in the Lord. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Yeah. He is the one who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. No matter the problem, no matter the circumstance, no matter the trial that you may be facing in your life, we leave our homes with the simple message every week of our lives that no matter what you may be facing in life, Jesus is still right for whatever's wrong in your life. Amen. And this morning, I don't know what it is that you may be facing, and I don't know what it is that you may be going through. I don't know what trial you might have brought into Mount Pisgah Baptist Church this morning. But child of God, if you're going to experience peace that passeth all understanding, do like the old hymn of the church says, take your burdens to the Lord and leave 
leave them there. We have a God who is a very present help in the time of trouble. We have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I would be a most miserable person if all I had to look forward to was this miserable world. But I can stand fast in knowing that God has not left us here alone. God's not in heaven this morning scratching his head right. wondering how he's going to solve the problems of America. Amen. Because the Bible still says if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face then will I hear from heaven forgive their sins and heal their land. You've come too late to tell me that revival can't happen in America today and I leave my home every week of my life with the joy of knowing that the church is still here so the church still has work to do. Child of God, right. we are not alone in this fight. Stand fast Amen. in the Lord. Amen. Man, I feel good this morning. I, that, that steroid I took starting to kick in. I feel like <laughs> preaching just a little bit. Stand fast in the Lord. God's got everything under control. Verse number two, I beseech Udeus and beseech Syntec that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Yeah. We're going to experience peace that passeth all understanding. We must stand fast in the Lord. And then we must be of the same mind. Yeah. Now let me preface what I'm about to say with this. I'm a Bible-believing, foot-stomping, soul-winning Baptist. I mean, I could just run down the whole list. I am a Baptist through and through. I was Baptist-born, Baptist born baptist baptist Bread, when I die, I'll be Baptist dead. I'm a Baptist. And I'm not going to compromise what this Bible says. We have an absolute word of God. I'm not going to compromise. This is settled. It's, it's done. But the Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And what I'm afraid is happening in churches all across America today is we're splitting hairs over the silliest of things. You don't believe it? How many Baptist churches are in Taylor County? How many Baptist churches are in Crawford County? Now we're claiming to all believe the same thing, but what happened? We can't all get along. Just because, and I have seen this, and you have seen this, and I, I dare not, I'm not calling anybody out this morning. Brother Brown hasn't loaded me up with anything. I came in here last night. That's the good thing about being an evangelist. I can come in, blow in, blow up, and blow out. All right? <laughs> I'm not saying we've got to compromise this Bible. But what's wrong with the body of Christ? I I'm sure that when we get to heaven, we're all just going to be all of us Baptists. And it's just going to be us Baptists, and that's it. That's going to be in heaven. I said, it's just going to be all Baptist. Everybody's just going to be happy. Will the circle be unbroken by and by all the ones of Baptist? No. Go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel. Be of the same mind. We can iron out differences without compromising our doctrine. I'm all for soul winning. I'm all for outreach. I'd swallow a goldfish at a funeral if it kept someone out of hell. But I've already said it. I'm not going to compromise what this Bible says in order to do so. Right. I have my beliefs, I have my convictions, I have my concerns, and they are not going to change. But what's wrong with the body of Christ coming together? Because the ultimate cause and the ultimate goal for the child of God should be to go out into a lost and a dying world and compel them to receive the message of the gospel. They're gro I said it this morning already. They're groping in darkness. The world we're living in has gone stark raving mad because they're trying to fill a void in their lives that could be so very easily filled by the person Jesus Christ. And here we are sitting this morning. <coughs> Excuse me, in comfortable pews and air conditioning, even though I don't know if it's working this morning. But we're sitting here, we're having a wonderful time in church, and we're worshiping the, the God of heaven. And there's a lost and a dying world outside the four walls of this building right. that you may be the only opportunity Amen. they have to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. Have you told them? Or are you just fine with sitting in your pew and saying it's going to be my four and no more? And we're Baptist, and these are just the signs of the time. I mean, I don't know why I'm getting off on all these tangents, but this is this is the this is one of the greatest. And yes, I understand there's going to be a great falling away, but that's not our excuse to sit in church and say, "Well, there's not ten people here this morning. It was just part of the great falling away." No, we're still here. That's right. Church still has a job to do. Amen. 
So stand fast in the Lord. Be of the same mind. Then look with me. Verse number 3. This goes right along with it. And I treat thee also, true yoke fellow. Help those women which labored with me in the gospel. With Clement also. And with my other fellow laborers whose names are written in the book of life. Thirdly, this morning, if we're going to experience peace that passeth all understanding, we must support fellow laborers. Yeah. It goes right along with being of the same mind. We can support those that... Work. We all have the same call. We have the same gospel. We have the same message to share with people who need to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But what happens is, is the church out, or the, the people outside the four walls of this building, they're looking and they're watching and they see how you act at Walmart. Mm -hmm. God help us at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> I have gotten to a place in my life, I turned 30 last year. Right? I turned 31 last year. See, if you turn 30, everything goes to pot. I'm just telling you. I'll be 32 years old this year. That feels old to me. I know a lot, some of you are a lot more mature than I am. I'm not going to say y'all older than I am. You're a lot more mature than I am. But 32 changed, or 30 changed me, honestly. Is that funny? I just got it. <laughs> You made me forget what I was talking about. Walmart. Walmart. God help us at Walmart. We go into Walmart, and I, I, I can't stand Walmart anymore. I just I cannot handle it. It drives me crazy. And, and nine times out of ten, if I've got to go into Walmart, I've got to go after one thing. I run in that store, run out, grab my one or two, three items. I can always get in that, in that line that says ten items or less. And I run up to that line, and I'm going to just check right out because I've got ten items or less. And every single time that happens, there's somebody in front of me that's got 45 items and 32 screaming kids. <laughs> happens every time. And if I'm not careful, it's in that moment... And I could lose my testimony just in the blink of an eye. Because they're watching outside the four walls of this. They're seeing how we act. The true test of a Christian is not how they act on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. It's how they're treating those that they come in contact with on a weekly basis. Support those that work alongside you. Share the message of the gospel with them. Not only being of the same mind, but supporting fellow laborers. I read this. This is not original to me. But I want you to notice something with me. Did you ever notice that almost every time that Bartholomew is mentioned in Scripture, Bartholomew, one of the disciples, is mentioned in Scripture, well, nine times out of ten, we will read and Bartholomew. Bartholomew is never singled out by himself. We'll see Philip and Bartholomew or Bartholomew and Matthew. Can I say this morning, it's good to have some Bartholomews in churches today. One who will come alongside a pastor and say, I, I, I'm not a Matthew, I'm not a Mark, I'm not a Luke. But I want to help you. I want to be alongside you. I support you. I, I'm for you. I'm in the same goal and the same uh, team. I'm on the same team as you. Yeah. That's how we're going to experience peace that passeth all understanding. Now we get to the good spot. I've got to hurry. Y'all are worried that the Methodists are going to beat us to the restaurant. They already have. All right, it's 12 o'clock. <laughs> we got to go. Verse number five. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. We can mesh the last part of this together, and I think it will do every single one of us a real good job this morning to realize that if we're going to experience the peace that passes all understanding we can rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice we can rejoice in knowing that heaven is being prepared for us if we've been saved and born again yeah. this world is not our home Amen. we're just passing through I has not seen nor ear heard neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him I don't know about you this morning but I am looking forward yeah. to heaven Amen. I'm looking forward to laying aside the cares and the troubles and the trials of this life and entering into that city that Jesus Christ himself has gone away to prepare for the yeah, saved, born again yeah. child of God. I'm looking forward to seeing the inside, the gates of that city, the walls of Jasper, the gates of pearl, the streets of pure gold. I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus Christ face to face. But can I say this this morning? I might be just a little bit more excited and, and maybe just a little bit excited about the things that are going to be left outside the gates of heaven. I'm talking about something we can rejoice 
about this morning, knowing that outside the gates of heaven there's going to be a big pile of junk. You say, Brother Jeremy, what are you talking about? The Bible says all the former things will have passed away. Amen. I love that word former. Yeah. That means that we'll lay aside all these eyeglasses and these walkers and these wheelchairs yeah. and these knee replacements and these hip replacements and all these things it takes to keep this physical body going. Child of God, the Bible says we'll have a new body made liken unto the Son of God. There's no junk that's going inside the gates of heaven. Amen. And even on the worst of days when it seems like all hell is breaking loose in my life, I can rejoice in knowing that God is still on the throne. He's not left us without comfort. He still gives peace that passeth all understanding. Yeah. And one of these days, and I don't believe it's going to be too long, we're going to get to see Jesus Christ face to face. And we'll yeah. worship Him. And we'll praise yeah. Him. And we'll thank Him for all praise that He's done for us. Yeah. Yeah. Rejoice! Yes. This is not the end. Amen. This is just the beginning. Amen. This is the training grounds. It's not going to be long before we check out of here. Rejoice. Lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. Yeah. Jesus is coming again. One of the greatest privileges and one of the greatest honors, if we're going to experience peace that passeth all understanding, we can stand fast and we can uh, stand alongside and support fellow laborers and we can rejoice. But if we're going to experience peace that passeth all understanding, one of the greatest privileges we have as the children of God is the power of prayer. Uh -huh. The Bible says in verse number 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we truly realize as Christians what we have in the power of prayer. Do you realize that just by speaking the name Jesus, when we speak his name, I firmly believe we've got a God who's been over the banisters of heaven waiting to hear from us. And I know that because I've called on him in times where all I knew to say was Jesus. I didn't know the words to pray. Now, I'm not going to stand up here and be so super spiritual and tell you that I've got things all together. When we came here last year, I was in uh, the very beginning stages of, uh, of a, just lack of a better term, total meltdown. Things had already started spiraling out of control in my life. And Brother Brown, I've got to be honest with you this morning. We can get up here and we can sing the songs and pray the prayers and we can hear the preaching and we can do all of those things. And sometimes we're just doing it out of memory. Mm -hmm. And a year ago when we were here, that's where I was. And we left here, and we sat at home for however many months that was, March, April, May, June, July. We sat at home for four months. And to be honest with you, I lost my mind. And I found myself back in May at a place I never thought I would be. And for sake of time, I'm not going into a whole lot of details this morning. But you've come too late to tell me. The Bible says that Satan's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yes, sometimes he comes in big, boisterous ways, and you have no question whether or not he's attacking your life. But what I found out in my life is if he can get in here, and if he can cause you to struggle and cause you to doubt and cause you to question and all of these things, that's where I found myself. I found myself with no peace. I found myself with no hope. I found myself with no joy. Now hear me this morning. God has not changed. Right. What I'm telling you this morning has nothing to do or any fault with God because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not changed. He's never moved. He's not going to start now. We're the ones that move. And I had moved away from him, to be totally honest with you. And I found myself in a place I never thought I would be. And throughout the past year, I'm sure many of you have faced struggles and you've faced things that you never thought you would have to face. But I told you this morning I didn't come to paint a doom and gloom picture. I came this morning to tell you that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. Amen. No matter the problem, no matter the trial, no matter the circumstance or the problem, God is still God that stands with arms wide open saying, Cast all your care on me, for I care for you. Yeah. This morning I wonder, do you have peace in your life? I'm not talking about 
in a moment because there are times in my life that I have struggles. I remember the morning I got saved like it was yesterday. I walked in the church doors dressed about like I was this morning, suit and tie, King James Bible, knew all about Jesus. December the 14th of 2008, I walked in the church doors wrapped in religion, knowing all about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Raised in church all of my life, but I did not have a personal relationship with him. Hear me this morning. You can know all about Jesus and miss knowing him. It's not about being religious. The Bible says you must be born again. You must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I ran out the church doors that Sunday morning after getting gloriously born again and said, well, I'm saved and on my way to heaven. It's just going to be the big pie in the sky and the great by and by from here on out. It didn't take me long to realize, as many of you have realized, that just because we're saved and on our way to heaven, we still have to face the same people and the same problems and the same pressures of life. But aren't you thankful this morning as a child of God when those troubles and trials do come, we do not face them alone. We have a God who will grant us peace that passeth all understanding. Here's what I want us to do this morning. Could we all stand to our feet and our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed this morning? Do you know that you know that you know that you're saved? Maybe it could be you don't have any peace in your life because you are religious. Maybe it is that you've been a member of Mount Pisgah Baptist Church all of your life but never truly come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Are you saved and you know it beyond the shadow of a doubt? If not, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. But what about it? Did you come in church this morning carrying a burden, carrying a problem, carrying a trial? Do you have peace in your life? Do you want peace in your life? Why not come? I know things are probably different. I don't know how you guys are handling the invitation. But you do what you need to do this morning. Maybe you should maybe make an altar out of your seat. Or maybe some of you would be comfortable with coming forward and bowing a knee at the altar this morning and saying, God, it's not my brother, it's not my sister. But it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. God, give me that peace that passeth all understanding. Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful time we've had in church today. God, in my feeble attempt to preach your word, I'm thankful that your word will not return unto him void. God, help it to speak to hearts. Help it to find a lodging place in someone's heart today. God, dear, this time of invitation, God, as pastor comes to the front to receive those that may need to pray or may need to be saved, God, I pray they would come take Brother Brown by the hand and say, Brother Brown, pray for me. I need to be saved. Or, Brother Brown, pray for me. I need to uh, experience that peace in my life. Whatever the case may be, God, we're thankful that you are standing with arms wide open, still saying, cast all your care on me. God, help us in this time of invitation. We'll thank you and praise you for everything you do. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Brother Brown's in the front. Rachel's going to sing a verse in the chorus of invitation. While she does, you do business with God this morning. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I surely fail. Without him, I would be true.
God. I love you with all my heart. If I don't ever get to see any of you here again on this side of life, I want to see you in heaven one day around the throne of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to spend eternity with you one day. Amen. Praise God. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Rachel. God bless y'all. Brother, will you go out to the front? The door out there? So people can greet you. I know you want to be at the table. So. Yes, sir. We appreciate y'all coming to be with us today. We love y'all, and we always enjoy when y'all can come. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, don't forget that we will be having our children's ministry today, 4 o'clock, for the kids. So bring your children up here for that, 4 to 5 this evening. Choir practice tonight at 545, and evening service tonight at 630. Uh, preaching through the Book of Romans, and I encourage you to be with me this evening uh, for that service. Remember, this Wednesday, there will be no youth meeting this week. But we will have Bible study at 7 o'clock here in the church. I invite you to come, uh, adults, and be with us in our Bible study <coughs> for you tonight at 7 o'clock. Please, uh, if you can help us out with the egg hunt, which will be in two weeks from today, uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board. So when you go, you go, go out there and sign up for uh, being able to bring some of those eggs and stuff. Uh, also, make sure you greet Jeremy and Rachel when you leave, too, and go out and let them know you love them and you pray for them and appreciate God's uh, calling in their life and their ministry to that. Amen? Praise the Lord. Brother Ashley, you put us in prayer.
What kind of warning do you want? It's got a battery meter on it. Don't drop it.
Do what? It's freaky, dude. It is.